In this video, I'm going to create a very simple Excel report using the new Velixo Reports Excel add-in for Acumatica. Now, first thing I'm going to do here is rename the spreadsheet to Report, and I'm going to create a second one here for the parameters. That way we can make this report a little bit dynamic. And what I want to do is go over to Acumatica and I want to reproduce just the first part of this profit and loss report. So you can see this has the branch up here, the ledger, the financial period. If we run this, we can take a look at what the report looks like. And I just want to reproduce part of this top portion up here up until the highlight down here, the total revenue line. So first thing for the parameters, when you run this report, you can pick the ledger and the financial period. And I'm also going to allow you to pick the branch as well. So if we come back down here to Excel, I'll type in the branch here, the ledger, and the financial period. My ledger's HQ, or sorry, my branch is HQ, my ledger is actual, and my financial period is March 2017. Now it renames it as a date, I don't like that. So I'm gonna undo make this whole column text and then retype it. That puts it in the format that it wants. So I've got my parameter set. Now I'll go ahead and click back over here to my report. And the first thing I want is the branch. Now it actually says the name of the branch, not the ID, but there's a Velixo reports function for that. If I come into the functions, Go over to the Velixo Reports Excel add-in category. And let's see here, right here, the branch name. First, you have to give it your connection. My connection is very cleverly called my connection. Now, the branch, here's where I can make it dynamic. So we can click over here, choose the branch, and click OK. And now it populates the name of the branch from Acumatica. And if you're curious where my connection came from, up here on the Acumatica add-in, and then Connection Manager. You can see there's the name, My Connection. This is how it's telling it to connect to my local, in this case, Acumatica instance. All right, and then the next thing is the word profit and loss. I'll just hard code that. This is the profit and loss report. And then it says, as of March 31st, 2017, now there's actually a Elixir Reports function that allows me to grab the last date in a financial period. So I'm gonna use that, put in my connection again, and then in the period, choose my financial period. And that's gonna be smart enough to go out there and grab what should be March 31st in this case. I just need to format it as a date. So there you go, March 31st. But I want a little more than that. You can see I want it to say as of March 31st, 2017. So what we can do is we can come back into this formula and we can put as of space, close the double quotes, put an and sign to concatenate it. And then we can use the text formula in Excel, wrap this whole thing in text, put a comma, put another double quote, and we can do four M's to have it spell out the full month name. This would be the three did or the three letter month. So we'll do the full month name and then we'll give it the two digit days and four digit year. Close the parentheses and the double quotes. And now you'll see it says as of March 31st, 2017. Now I think I was a little brain dead on that one. So let's move the comma to here, that's better. And we can see we've got these first two up here are a little bit larger, it's all bold. So I'll make these all bold, but I will, let's see, bold. Then I will make these first two just a little bit bigger using regular Excel text functionality. Let's go ahead and make it wider as well. And if I come back here, we've got year to date and period to date, so YTD, PTD, these look to me about the same size as the first two lines. So I'll go ahead and make those. Actually, let's just copy the format and paste it like that, okay. And then we have a line underneath, so I'll go in 
and I'm sorry, not a comment. I want to do format cells, do a border, put it underneath like that. And then I want a line that says revenue. So I'll say revenue, let's make it bold. Then I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste these lines in. I'll do a copy. And then I'm going to right click, match the destination formatting, just so I don't mess up the formatting. Let's put these back on the left, get rid of the numbers. And I want to indent these a little bit, so I'll highlight those and increase the indentation like that. All right, that's looking good. We'll go ahead and make this bold as well, the total sales. And now I want to grab my numbers. So to know how it's calculating the number in Acumatica, I'm going to go here to my parameters, go to Edit Report, that opens a new tab, and then go to my row set. And I'm actually going to copy this URL and put it down here so I have everything in one sheet. And then I will put that on the right and put my Excel on the left to make it a little bit easier to move around. Now we can see here that actually this line is grabbing everything with the sales account class, but it's telling it down here to expand it by the GL account and put the GL code and description in the actual description. So actually to see the GL account, I can see it back here. Go ahead and collapse that. So this is telling me that's the actual GL account code. So I'll go back here to this cell. Let's use another Vlixo reports function. We will go back in here and let's choose the ending balance because we want the year to date number. We have a few things that we need to give it. My connection. The ledger was actually a parameter so we can click back here and choose the ledger. Then account class will skip for now. The account in this case is going to be 40,000. Sub account will skip. Let's scroll down. The branch was also a parameter, so let's use that. And then the as of period is also a parameter that we put. So we've made a few things dynamic in the parameters. Let's click OK. And you'll see it pulls in a number right away, and that does match my number from Acumatica. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing with the freight. Now what I want to do first is I want to hard code my parameters so that when I paste the formula down, it doesn't do the, where Excel tries to change the row or the column. So I'm going to use F4 on my keyboard. Let me try that again. F4, he puts, it puts the dollar signs in there. That hard codes it. I'm going to do that on all three of my parameters. And that way, let me just make sure I got that. Yep, that looks good. That way, if I copy this and paste it, it keeps everything in place and it doesn't try to change any of the rows or the columns on me. So then the only thing I need to change here is the account is actually going to end in 10. So there's my 5,000. That matches up. That all looks good. And then my total sales revenue is just a formula. So I'll just do sum of the previous two rows and hit enter. So that's all good. And uh, you can also see here my numbers are already formatted for me, but if I wanted to highlight here and go up and choose this comma. That's the number formatting that I'm using to get them to look nice there. And now for this next part, I'm not going to go through and do all of these sections because it is doing the expand on this. Now that's a feature that Felixa reports doesn't have yet to be able to just put in one line and have it automatically expand. So I'm just going to skip doing that. It's the same technique, but I'm going to just put in an other revenue section. So we'll call it other revenue. Go ahead and make that bold. And if we click over to the row sets, what is other revenue made up of? It's actually made up of two things. Now in my case, the return account class is not returning anything, and I don't want to get into handling an error message quite yet. So I'm just going to grab this other income account class. And I'll go ahead and take this one up here, copy it, and oops, sorry about that. Let's try that again. Copy that and paste it. And let's change some things. So I still want the ledger, 
but if I arrow through here, you'll notice right now where my cursor is up here, it's between two commas, and that part of the formula, that parameter, expects the ledger. Now, if I keep moving it over, if you watch eventually on the bottom, it's going to change. Now the bold part is account class. So that's now in the account class part of the formula. So here's where I want to put uh, the income. And then I want to take out the account part because I'm just using the account class now. And then I'll go ahead and hit enter. So let's double check that number. And pull back negative 136, 769, 32. That's exactly right. And now I just need one more thing. We'll call it total revenue. And I'm going to add these two numbers together. So there's my 6, 7, 61, 376, 18. That matches my report right here. So everything looks good. Now the only thing I need to do is I'm going to copy this. Actually, let's go run row at a time. I'll copy this and paste this. Now for the period to date, instead of the account ending balance, what I want is actually called account turnover. Now this one's slightly different because it wants the connection, the ledger, that's all good. The pram or the account class I'm leaving blank, the account's good. But the main difference is at the very end, it needs a from period and a to period. You can see that right down here. So I just need to take this last piece, copy it, and paste it so I give it a from period and a to period. Hit enter. Now that gives me my matching number there. And then it's just the same process that we went through before. I'll change the account, put in my formula, I can copy and paste that one. And then down here, I want to get rid of the account and put in my of income account class. That all looks good, and then we'll copy and paste that as well. So not too bad. You can see pretty quickly we were able to duplicate at least a part of the report on the right. And then, of course, just one last piece to show here. Um, actually, before I show that, let me go up here, turn off the grid lines, just to make it look a little more like my Acumatica report. And just to prove that this is all live, if I close down out of here and go make a journal entry. So we're back in March of 2017. So let me make sure I put something into March. We know our sales account is 4,000. So let me make sure I put an entry into four or 40,000. I'll just make it cash. Let's say $25. And then we'll use that $40,000. let us save it. Let's release it. Release it. So on my report right here, I was at 68, 93. I guess we just need to remember this 136. If I refresh here, let's try this. I think I need to refresh my whole page. We were at 136. I'm going to rerun the report. And we're now at 161 because of my journal entry that I just did. But also, back on the left-hand side with Flixo reports, I can just come up to Acumatica and use the Refresh All button. You see it thinks for a few seconds. It changes, goes to NA while it's thinking. And then when it's done refreshing, you'll see it picked up that same journal entry that I just did. So I can grab live numbers, effectively the same thing as clicking this Run Report button in Acumatica. You just use the refresh all button in Flix or reports. And I've been able to duplicate my report into Excel. Of course, there's a lot of advantages to doing that. I can now have multiple tabs, design my whole report book, do it all in Excel, and refresh everything with the click of a button. So that's your first report, building your first report in Valixa reports.